Okay, in this video, we're going to do another u substitution example. Let's do the integral of t times e to the negative 3t dt. And before we just go in and try integration by parts, you always want to make sure you can't do u substitution first because u substitutions are easier, they're faster, and if you're on a test, time is of the essence. You need to get done as quickly as possible with the test so you can go back and review your answers. So don't go spending time doing unnecessary work that you know you would do if you did an integration by parts where you have to find u, n, n, d, v. If you can just do u substitution, do that. So quickly we need to try to rule that out first. If we did a u substitution, what could we do? We have two functions here. Could we let u equal t? Well, no, we don't do that, right? In u substitutions, we don't just let u equal t or u equal x. That's not helpful. If you did, you know, for example, if you did that, you'd have, if u equal t, you'd have u times e to the negative 3u. Well, that has the exact same form as t times e to the negative 3t. That didn't get you anywhere. Okay, so what if you let u equal um, negative 3t? Well, if you... In a, uh, differentiate both sides you just see that du is equal to negative 3 dt and that doesn't help either you don't really have any useful substitutions that happen there to sort of knock out one of these functions of t here so use substitution doesn't work in this case now let's go ahead and do integration by parts and I, and I do want to encourage you that being able to quickly rule out u substitutions, um, it, it comes with experience. You're going to get better at that the more you do these types of problems. But I, I would encourage you to always try to do that when you're doing your homework. Always try to check if you could do u substitution first because that experience is what's necessary, is quickly determining whether or not you could do u substitutions and quickly ruling it out if you can't. Okay, so we can't do u substitution. We have to use integration by parts on this problem. We have to select a proper u and a proper dv such that it actually helps us solve this integral. So if I let u equal negative 3t, if I differentiate that, I'm just going to get, you know, it's going to be sort of, so let's just try it real quick, u equals e to the negative 3t. Well, if I differentiate that, we see that du is equal to, what's the de derivative of, of e to the negative 3t, well, it's just the function e to the negative 3t times the coefficient on t, so that would be negative 3 out front. This, and you know, with dt here, this looks more complicated, not less. We're not really getting anywhere by doing this, not in this case. So I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to try letting u equal t and dv equal, equaling um, e to the negative 3t. And remember, this is an integration by parts problem. We can let u equal t. In this case, it's helpful. If we do that, then we see that du is equal to dt. And then dv must be equal to e to the negative 3t dt. Don't leave off the dt. Whenever you have a dv, you have to have, you know, d whatever, dx, dt, whatever else you're integrating, wh whatever your variable is that you're integrating with respect to. This is, you know, mathematically proper to have that there because then you know if you do the integral of both sides then it you need something to integrate with respect to that's why you need that there um, and we see that if we integrate that we get v is equal to now the integral of e to the negative 3t remember we have to think in reverse if we have e to the negative 3t and we differentiate that right we're going to get e to the negative 3t times negative 3 um, so we get this extra negative 3 out front due to the chain rule. But we need to think backwards and think what function, if had we differentiated it, would have given us what's in this integral here, this e to the negative 3t. Well, it would have been e to the negative 3t over negative 3, right? Because then if you differentiate this, you're going to get a negative 3 out front here, right, because of the chain rule, and those would cancel, and then you would just be left with e to the negative 3t. So remember, whenever you're doing an integral, you're usually dividing, you know, by some coefficient on your variable. Um, so now we have everything we need to solve our integral. So let's write this out. So we have the integral of t times e to the negative 3t 
dt is equal to u times v. Well, u is t, v is uh, e to the negative 3t divided by negative 3 minus the integral of v du. Well, du is just dt. V is e to the negative 3t over negative 3. I'm going to write e to the negative 3t, and I'm going to pull out this you know, negative 3 on the bottom. So that ends up being um, negative 1 third, right? And it's a constant, so I could do that. But it's negative 1 third, but here we have minus negative 1 third. That becomes a plus. Okay, so now look at what we have. We have this t times e to the negative 3t over negative 3 plus one third, and we're multiplying that by the integral of this e to the negative three t. We already figured out what that is. It's, you know, this thing just sort of repeats. And so we already solved the integral of e to the negative three dt, and we can just write that as what we, what we figured out it was, right? So it's e to the negative three t over negative three. Of course, we have our constant here. And then what we need to do is simplify, or I at least encourage you to simplify problems. Um, or answers, pull out any common uh, factors. Here, I see a common factor of e to the negative 3t over negative 3 in both terms. So let's go ahead and pull that out front. We have e to the negative 3. Well, let's just write that as negative e to the negative 3t over 3. And that whole entire thing is going to be multiplied by t, right? That's this t here, plus 1 third, plus c. And that would be your answer. And this is, you know, something that, again, you can only get by using integration by parts, not by doing any u substitution. Let's go ahead and do one more problem in this video. And it's actually a pretty, um, I want to say, important one because when you first see it, it's a little tricky to know that it's actually an integration by parts problem. So the integral of ln of x dx um, does not look like an integration by parts problem based on what I told you previously. Remember I said it has a form, you know, some function of x times some other function of x. Um, in this case, you see you have ln of x. That seems like it's just a single function, right? The question is, what could you do here to solve this integral? Unless you have this thing memorized, right, you might know what it is by heart, but do you know how to analytically solve it? not by any methods you learned before, by just taking simple antiderivatives or by doing u substitution. I mean, what u substitution could you do? u equals ln of x, okay, but then that gets you virtually nowhere. So this actually can be solved using integration by parts if you recognize that technically there's a one out front in front of this ln of x, and one dx is is a function of x. It's a, it's a constant function. I shouldn't say it's a function of x, but it is a constant function. And so if you do that too, finding your u and dv should be pretty easy, right? Um, you definitely know that ln of x dx can't be dv because that would be the problem in and of itself. We already don't know how to integrate that, so we can't let that be dv. It must be our u. So we said u should be ln of x, then du would be, well, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, and we have a dx here, right? And I, I know I skip steps a lot. Usually this would be du dx here, but then I move it over, and a lot of times I skip that. I just want to clarify that that's all I'm doing. I'm skipping the simple step of moving the dx to the other side of the um, equality, e equal sign. And so here, then, we know that dv must be equal to 1 times dx. Well, that's just dx, right? So the integral of dv, well, that's v. The integral of dx, that's x. Okay, we have all of our parts here. We just need to write everything out using the formula. So this is the integral of ln of x dx is equal to u times v. Well, that would be, I'm going to write it as x times ln of x. I'm going to write du, but it doesn't matter. Uh, minus the integral of v du. V is x, okay? Du is 1 over x dx. 1 over x dx. Well, look at that. I can simplify this integrand here, right? Because I can cancel. This x is in the numerator, right? It's x of 1. I cancel with that x. 
there. And I end up with just the integral of dx. Well, that's handy because it's really easy. So this turns out to be x times ln of x minus x plus c. Now, a lot of times this is how you see the, um, this is actually how you see this answer. Um, but, you know, you could pull out, you have this common factor of x here. You could write x times ln of x minus 1, right, plus c. That's another way to write it. Um, so that's how you solve this, uh, this integral of ln of x. If you were ever wondering, that's how it's done.